Hello friends, this video on biodiversity and conservation part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now comes the topic of conserving biodiversity. Now as I have been telling you, biodiversity is extremely important. We saw the importance of biodiversity and we also know why extinction of species take place. Now when we know the cause, when we know the harmful effects, then we have to find out ways how to find a solution to that problem and the solution to this is to conserve biodiversity. So here we will see that what are the various ways by which we can conserve the variety of living organisms on this earth. Now there are two approaches to conserve biodiversity. So two major approaches are followed. One is in situ conservation and the other one is ex situ conservation. Now what do we mean by in situ and ex situ? What in means inside, ex means outside. And what is the meaning of C2? C2 means something related to glass. So anything which happens in the test tube, in the glass, in the lab. So that is known as in C2. And X C2 means anything that happens off site. So in C2 conservation is on site conservation, and X C2 is off site conservation. So what do we mean by that? Now we will get to know as we discuss it in detail. So first we will talk about in C2 conservation. So this is on-site conservation. That means we are not relocating the animals anywhere. The animals will remain in the same place. They will remain in their natural habitat. But what we will do is we will protect the entire habitat. Because as we saw that most of the animals become extinct because they sometimes they lose their habitat because human activity or you know, human beings over exploit that area or over exploit the animals. So now if we keep that area protected, it will remain protected from uh, any sort of damage to the animal as well as any sort of damage to the entire habitat. So that is called on-site conservation. So that means protecting an endangered species in its natural habitat. Now which species are known as endangered species? Those species whose count have already reduced a lot. So the number of organisms belonging to that species is already less and it is very near to extinction. So you just have some uh, handful number of uh, organisms belonging to that species. So if those organisms also get killed, then that species will become extinct. But if we are able to maintain at least those organisms, they can reproduce amongst themselves and they can increase their population once again. So those these kind of endangered species are specially protected in their natural habitat. And what do we do? We do not relocate the animal from their natural habitat. They remain there. But what we do is we protect that particular area. So that area is declared as a protected area <coughs> and that's how the species can also be protected. So what are the protections that are ensured in that protected area? Protected against predators. So any such organism which feeds on that particular endangered species, they should not be allowed in that area. Protecting the habitat. So Human beings should not exploit the habitat, so the habitat should remain well protected. So, so some of the examples of uh, in situ conservation are national parks, sanctuaries, uh, biosphere reserves. So these are some of the examples where in situ conservation approach is being followed. Now if you look at our own country in India itself, we have more than 600 protected areas, either in the form of national park or animal sanctuaries. So all these areas, they are not like you captivate the animals. It's like that particular area is protected so that people cannot hunt animals there, people cannot exploit the habitat, people cannot cause any any sort of harm to the animal. So that is how that particular area is protected. And this type of conservation is known as in situ conservation. Now, as I said that there were two approaches and the second approach is ex situ conservation. 
So ex situ conservation is off site conservation. So here the animals or the organisms are not conserved in their natural habitat. Instead, an artificial environment is created where the organism can survive. So it is like protecting an endangered species outside its natural habitat. So we basically relocate the animal to a particular area where we give all provisions which help in the uh, survival of that particular animal. So the best example that you can think of is the zoo. I'm sure all of you would have visited zoo. So what happens in a zoo? So you, you will see that many of the animals like tigers and lions, they are all captivated inside the cage. So they, they stay inside the cage. However, they are provided timely food and everything is provided to them which is needed for their survival. So zoo is not their natural habitat. So an environment is created which looks similar to their natural habitat and then their those organisms are being kept. So zoo is one good example of ex C2 conservation. So zoo, botanical garden. So botanical garden is an example where different varieties of plants can be conserved. So you would have seen that you have big botanical gardens in cities like Bangalore, Uti. So everywhere you see a lot of variety of different plants are conserved in that particular area. Aquarium is another example of ex C2 conservation. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.